Recording in progress. That way we've got this for ever. All right, welcome everyone. This was, uh, was it not kind of interesting? Like literally three minutes ago, we probably had like four people in the room. So we know when, the, when it starts, <clears throat> all coming in right on time. Um, okay. We, um, we know that we're an amazing company and all of these uh, values and benefits, and we'll want to spend time on them all the time, but just keep them as a reminder. Um, but what I do want to do is um, introduce Chris <clears throat> and have Chris come up here. And uh, he is our sponsor of the day and also um, uh, with Scatterscape. And I want to give you a moment to be able to Share with us a little bit about what you do and what we need to know. Thank you so much. Hi, help? everyone. I'm Christopher Maupin. Uh, I'm here with Scatterscape Photography. So we're a provider of, let me just see if I can do this. Oh, here we go. Uh, we're like a one-stop provider of high-end real estate photos, drone, aerial photography, Matterport 3D, uh, virtual staging, twilight photos, any of that stuff. You can come through us and you can book online. This is like our super selling point here is that you can go to scatterscape.com and you can book straight to our calendar. So you never have to call us and be like, hey, how far out are you guys booked? Tomorrow, we'll get it done tomorrow. Um, you can see the time slots are available, pick the date that works for you. If your client calls you back, your seller and says, hey, I gotta move it to next Wednesday, you can do that online too. So you don't always have to be calling us and waiting on us and all that. So yeah, definitely uh, check it out. Um, but I, like I said, we do listing photos, Matterport 3D. We do video tours, virtual staging. If you guys haven't tried virtual staging, I mean, you haven't seen the tech lately. It's amazing. It's so, so realistic. Uh, graphic design and of course, drone photography, which you can add to any order. These are our listing photos. These are examples from real jobs over the last several months. So we know what we're doing. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard an objection from your sellers like, yeah, I want to list my house, but I'm kind of worried about COVID. I don't want these people walking through my house and all these strangers coming in. A Matterport 3D tour is really helpful. Video tours and Matterport tours are helpful to overcome those ob objections because basically everyone, you know, your serious buyers can sort of sort themselves out. They can find uh, they can they can take a look through the house, experience it themselves. You can even talk with uh, the other agent, say, "Hey, you know, make sure that your uh, your client looks through the uh, 3D tour." Oh, sure. Sorry, we're gonna zoom here. Oh, much appreciated. Great for those uh, joining in from from far away. Uh, Matterport 3D tour is an awesome way to overcome that objection, although. There we go. Yeah, so again, allows people to see the layout of the house, allows them to go in and walk around. I think you guys have probably all seen or experienced one. If not, you can check out a ton of examples on our website, scatterscape.com. Uh, virtual staging, I really wanna plug this, uh, any style imaginable. So you're never gonna have to call in and be like, hey, how far out are you guys booked? And then it's gonna be like a thousand dollars and all this stuff. It costs $129, you get five staged areas or images. It's really a killer deal. Uh, any style you want, we have over 300,000 items in our virtual inventory, and we can turn it around in 24 to 48 hours. So really, really an awesome thing. This is actual photo from a job. This was the photo before, and this is, all of this is, is fake. So <clears throat> we're a five-star rated company on Google. Please check it out and hear what other realtors have to say about us. Uh, and yeah, we're growing. So let's cut to the chase. We got an awesome catered lunch here for you guys. Salads, sandwiches, soups from Zupas, uh, chips, drinks. Um, Eric and I will stick around. You can talk to us afterwards if you like. If you have any projects coming up, we'd love to help you. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, please check us out online at scatterscape.com. Thanks. Thank you for that. There we go. All right. Okay. 
<clears throat> uh, a couple things. If you guys saw this already, uh, this is pretty neat. This is our uh, very own Gary Keller, the most powerful person in real estate um, that that came out in rankings. And this is <clears throat> pretty neat to see him, the the leader of our uh, our company here. And this is this was among they. I think they had a bunch of other. Um, people that, I don't know if you saw the email or the article, but they had several other people uh, that were influencers in, in the real estate industry. And he was um, number one. So he's been in the top five, I think, for the last several years and occasionally number one. Um, so it is pretty neat to see him up there. Uh, we have a couple things coming up, January 20th. So that is in two days. This is going vertical path to a limitless life with Jay. Uh, you can find that on KW University. We also have building powerful pipelines with Keller Williams. This is the 27th and that one is over Zoom. Um, <clears throat> you can register and get that info. Uh, that is in an email, I believe. Uh, Sammy sent that out this morning as well. Um, so if you didn't get these emails, if you don't get these, again, we want to make sure so that we have all of your correct info. And sometimes uh, it's really quick and easy to hit the unsubscribe button. So you might have done that sometime in the past. And that might be a reason why you might not see some of these updates. If that is the case, we do want to make sure that you guys, um, that you guys see this and you have that info. <clears throat> Uh, we have the awards gala. So this is just for our Utah region. We are doing it all together. We did it a little bit different last year, if you guys remember that, but this is more similar. We did um, a few years ago where we all come together. Everyone is invited. Sometimes in the past, we've had venues that were a little bit too small where we couldn't actually invite everyone. Um, but this is, this is pretty neat. So we do want everyone to come and bring your plus one um, to come and enjoy and be a part of this and support those that are receiving awards. Hopefully you're receiving an award, um, but that we can all be, to, be there together. This is on the 28th. So if you haven't already registered, um, we do want you to register so we have a head count. And it's really neat that we have the governor, uh, Gary Herbert, he is going to come and be our guest speaker. So pretty neat uh, event coming up. The link, the event bright went down yesterday. Do we have a update or solution on that? Okay. And that is at the bottom of this uh, graphic um, on that email that you see, kwutah.com. Dress is a formal. Fancy schmancy. It's written on there just like that. Fancy schmancy. Yep. <clears throat> you can go formal, semi formal. Um, you will probably be out of place if you wear your sweats. There you go. Is that clear enough? Um, office safety training. So, this is something we had to reschedule because of the snowstorm that we had. And this is coming up February 2nd. So if you have an office um, or if you're here regularly, we are very, very strongly, please come. We need you there. Um, if you, uh, but everyone, we do want everyone to come, but especially those that have an office here, we wanna make sure that we have some, some training for, uh, for you guys and for everyone. Family reunion, we talked a lot about this. Um, it is getting closer and closer and they are limiting uh, tickets for in-person, so please, uh, please register and let us know because as a group, as our office, we are doing, we have a kind of a fun schedule and agenda, agenda. and so we're arriving a day early so that we can go and have, uh, have fun at one of the parks all as a group and just spend some time together. I think that would be a lot of fun. And then family reunion, the actual event is the 19th. 20th and 21st. We have a few things that we are doing in the evenings. So there's, if you're a part of the mastery, if you're, a, um, if you have mastery coaching, 
then there is an event at F F they are inviting guests. Uh, so if you have a desire to go, then um, myself, we have a few, several of us that are in mastery coaching, we can get guests in. Um, they do charge guests a, a ticket uh, Epcot entry fee, which I think is a regular fee is 150 bucks. So if you do want to go and you want to experience that, you can be a part of that group and also you know, enjoy Epcot as well. Um, the 20th is the regional mixer. So we've got several people. Um, we've got that mixer that we're getting together as a region on the 20th. And then on 21st, we have our own market center. We're going to get together and have our own special dinner, which would be pretty fun. All right. We've got a few people that we want to welcome to the team um, that have joined us here. We <clears throat> Every month, we have a lot of people that come and join us. It's one of the things that we are pushing hard to do. We want to grow our market center and um, we want to make sure that people are recognized and know that these people are walking the halls and might see them again. So McKay Clark, uh, Portia Riddle, we don't have a, a picture there of her. John Murphy, if you guys remember him, he, he left and um, actually went out of state for a while and came back. Um, Alejandra Sanchez, uh, Jorge Rosa. Um, and there we go. So if you guys see them, please, uh, please say hi and welcome them to the team. So now we want to get on to our um, awards. These are awards again for December, for the month of December. And the reason that we do them right, right around the middle of the month is reports usually uh, from KWRI. A lot of times those don't come in for a few days and then we can go through the process and make sure we've got it all lined out. <clears throat> but this is for December, so we want to start off with something that we think is very cool. We have two people. We have the agent of the month, and we have the cultural icon of the month. And I want to invite Sammy to uh, present those. And the first one uh, it, for the agent of the month is Zola Amar. Zola, here, come up here. Oh, you need a mic? She doesn't want to come up here. She's a little bit shy. <clears throat> so when we were talking about who we thought the agent of the month should be, um, Zola signed on. How many months ago did you sign on with us? October. So pretty recently. And you'll just see her around the office talking with just about everybody, trying to figure out her business, how to pursue it some more. She zipped her feet in commercial a little bit as well. So we just think she's killing it. And we can't wait to see what you do. Yep. And the next one we have cultural icon of the month is Caden Donahue. Caden, let's give him a round of applause. Kaden, I don't we'll think he's here, but yeah, um, here. anybody that's seen Caden, he is a go getter. He um, door knocks just about every day, about 200 doors. Um, he is just killing it. He signed on only a few months ago as well. So if you see him, Definitely chat with him and see what he is doing well in his business. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right, there's these people. I don't want to share them too early, give away the, the surprise. Uh, we want to make sure that you guys can see profit share is something that is very serious um, in our office. And we want to make sure that those are... A lot of these people are receiving, sometimes we get like a small profit share check. Um, again, we, re, we share about 50% of all of the profits here at Keller Williams. And these are all the people that in one month have received at least $100. Um, sometimes $100 might not be a ton, but these are at least 100. Sometimes people receive several hundred or more. But um, so anyone over 100, this is Trent Bright, Annie Cannon, Cody, Cody Felberg, Andrew, Nick, Candace, Caprice, Scott, Emily, Patria, Carrie, Amy, Becky, and Eden. Let's give them a round of applause. <clears throat> and these are for um, people who have introduced other people into Keller Williams, so sharing the profits for that reason. Okay, home run. This is, um, we've got several slides of this. We'll, um, we'll wait for the applause at the end after I read through all the names. So home run is anyone who has 
closed the home, uh, signed a listing agreement, or got a home under contract all in the same month. So those three things all together. Uh, Alicia, Annie, Becky, Brian, Chris, David, David, Devin, Edward, Emily, Heather, Jeff, Jen, Jill, John, Justin, a lot of J's going in order, um, Claire, Cody, Lacey, Les, Lori, Matt, Melanie, Natalie, Nate, Patricia, Rich, Rob, Ryan, Ryan, Sandra, Cherylee, Steve, Tom, Tracy, and Zula. Let's give these people a round of applause. That's awesome. <clears throat> that means the business is closing and you've got more business coming up because, uh, because you closed and you've got more. All right, first listings with, uh, with our office here. This is always something that we love to celebrate. So this is Sandra, Edward, and Devin with their first listings here at Keller Williams. Congrats. <clears throat> Um, first closings here, again, some of these are because of being a newer agent and some are because they've come over from a different company. This is Sandra, Edward, Dion, and Cameron Wilson. Congrats, you guys. <clears throat> um, cappers is once you receive 100% uh, of your cap or you've paid out 100% of your cap and then everything after that, you get 100% of your commission. This is, for this month is Amy Gibbons, uh, Heather Roxburg, Alexandra, um, Marlene, and Rebecca Turpin. Congrats, you guys. <clears throat> um, contracts closed individual. This is in order of units. So uh, this is Jared Hansen with 10 units. Um, Rebecca Turpin, Annie Cannon, Ryan Poole. Amy Gibbons and Steve Tobias. Steve, look at that, uh, that volume down there at the bottom. 16 and a half million in one month. Let's give them a round of applause. That's awesome. <clears throat> if you don't know, Steve is our commercial guy. He does, uh, he does a lot of commercial <coughs> units. Um, on our contracts closed team member, Again, this is uh, instead of uh, individual, this is team member. This is Heather, Cody, Tyler, Tori, Cody, Lacey, Brian, Josh, Justin, and Emily. Congrats, everyone. That's 6.7 units on down. And if I didn't say this, to be on the list, we count um, anyone that has at least three units or above. So if you have at least three in one month, then that's, that's what this list consists of. Contracts written individual, Jared Hansen with nine units, um, Ryan Poole, Steve Tobias, Annie Cannon, and Rebecca Turpin. That's awesome. Congrats, you guys. What I'm gonna do towards, uh, just so you guys know, towards the end, I'm gonna invite a couple people. We wanna hear you know, what's successful and what's working for them. So we'll save that towards the end. Contracts written team member. So this is the team member units, uh, Justin Hurd, he's here, Brian Hurd, Lori, Rob, Heather, Tori, and Cody. Congrats, everyone. That's awesome. <clears throat> all, all in one month. Um, contracts written team member, Josh, right over here. We've got Tracy, Tyler, and Emily. Nice job. Uh, listings taken individual, um, two on the list. So we need to get a few more listings taken. I think that was pretty sparse for the month of December. But uh, Steve with three units at almost 16 million, that's not bad. Ryan Poole, six units, almost 4 million in one month. So taking some listings, um, yeah, pretty serious even just for those two. So congrats, you guys. <clears throat> Um, team member, listings taken, Lacey Stevens and Brian Hurd. Good, congrats, guys. That's awesome. Usually we see this number a bit of this, uh, this list a little bit longer. I think December was kind of a, 
um, sparse month. So uh, let's focus on some listings moving forward. All right, Crimson Club. Um, there's no hiding it. You can see the, the top three right there. So this is an interesting one. Normally we do see J Jared Hansen up at the top and we're used to that. But look how close Ryan Poole is right here. He was one unit away from taking the, taking the crown from Jared this month. Um, definitely beat him there in the volume uh, department, but in the units that is, um, he was just one away. So Ryan, this close, and we know that Jared, he looks at these, like he, he cares. You might think that he's always feeling comfortable and in the lead, but he, he does like to know. And he was sweating this month. Yep, Jared, uh, but still, I mean, this is such a huge congrats to Jared Hansen um, for being up in front. You're a great example of hard work. Ryan Poole, 19 units, um, that is amazing. And then look at the volume on Steve Tobias for 11 units in one month. That is almost $50 million accounted for in one month. That is pretty incredible. So the Crimson Club, is the, the combination of listings taken, uh, contracts written, and contracts closed. So those three all in um, all of that volume in one month. Let's give all three of these a round of applause. That is incredible. Um, yeah, and we do have these, um, <coughs> these awards up here for the number one, so Jared, he does have uh, you know, quite a few of these at this point. Um, so Crimson Club Award, that is for the first place um, only, unfortunately. I totally forgot the, the Capper Awards. Rebecca, so we have awards for you. We're, don't, don't forget, I'm gonna come back to that and make sure that you guys, once you cap, we have uh, little Capper caps and some blankets, you guys can choose which one um, you guys prefer. So. We'll come back to that one. Okay, so this is for the group, uh, or yes, for the group. This is um, <clears throat> whatever, uh, if you have at least three agents or more on your team, you're considered a group. So as far as definition, um, and our number one group this last month was, uh, is Be Heard with, uh, we'll call it 32 units and uh, just under 14 million in production. That is, that's pretty awesome in, de, in the month of December. Let's give them a round of applause. Um, followed up with Peak Collective, 21 units, and then Roxburgh Group at uh, just under 15 or 16 units. Um, when we get to this spot, I do want to make sure that we take some time to recognize these people and have them come up. And I know Josh, you're here from the Be Heard Group. I would love to introduce you have you come up here if you're willing to come and uh, share a little bit about this. Um, one thing while he's coming up, uh, we spoke with Brian. So Brian, if you don't know Brian Hurd, um, he's the, the leader of that team. And he uh, wanted to make it very apparent that Josh of their team has um, really been outstanding and just, just being so consistent on closing deals, uh, making sure that he's always in there and and just work in there every single day. He's such a great example of that. So that is coming from Brian. He wasn't able to be here, but he wanted to make sure that you knew that in front of everyone. So um, Josh, can you tell us a little bit, like what do you feel like to your success on the team? What do you feel like is, uh, is something that we can all take from and maybe apply into our businesses? I would say uh, for me, it's been consistency. I just, I'm the first one in the parking lot, last one to leave. I just do my tasks every single day. I make a, a to-do list every single morning and I don't leave until that to-do list is done. Can you share with it, what, is, what does that to-do list look like? Does it, is it usually like, okay, what do I do? What do I need to do? Is it just a strictly a to-do list or are there a couple examples of what, what things yeah. you focus on? So number one, I, I focus on gratitude, right? So there's a lot of people in my world that I contribute this to. So I'm very grateful for those people, especially my clients. So I write two thank you letters every single morning, at least two. Uh, number two, I reward all my referrals. So if somebody gives me a referral, like I don't let that, like, hey, thanks, appreciate it. Like 
that is like, for me, that's like the big thing. And then um, other than that, then I write uh, a hot list and a warm list. And I make sure I touch everybody on my hot list every single day. And then I touch everybody on my warm list at least once a week. Awesome. So. Um, is there anything that you feel like um, December is traditionally, you know, we all decide, hey, we're just going to yeah. take that month off. Um, what do you feel like is a success for you in December and then rolling into the, the new year? Yeah, I closed 10 deals in December. Um, and so I think I saw just a little fissure. I found a little crack in the market and I just exploited it like as best as I could. I had a lot of first time home buyers, zero down buyers close. Um, I had a lot of people that hit what I see traditionally is everybody from Thanksgiving, once kind of November hits, everybody kind of lays off, um, especially with sellers and that kind of stuff. But once I hit uh, Thanksgiving, there was a lot of homes that actually hit the market that nobody was looking at. And I just kind of took that to town. So that's awesome. Yeah. Any, any words of advice going into the new year, as far as what you're going to focus on and you would say, this is, this is something that if you're going to spend some time, this is worth uh, putting some energy towards it. Uh, I'm 100% referral based. So that's always been my focus. That will always be my focus. Um, like I said, I just think, uh, uh, investing in your database is going to be again, once is my biggest thing. And that's what I'll continually focus on in 2022. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions for Josh? Anything you guys would like to right here. everything, everything that you can think of. If you don't have money, invest your time. If you don't have a business that is like invest in some way in their lives. So I did that presentation. Uh, what's it? A couple months ago, two months, meet the masters two months ago. And that was my big thing is like, I always focus ahead, but like the biggest thing is like you pick somebody and you just love on them. Like my business plan is love on people. Right. And so that's just what I consistently do. If you, like I said, if you don't have money, spend your time with them. If you are going to uh, invest a little bit of money, look at who's in your database that owns businesses and invest in their business. Give them a, a shout out on Facebook. Give them a, some sort of, of love so that you are more interested in them than them being interested in you. What would be one example of... Um either a phone call script or a, if you, if you don't want to spend any money and spending time with them or maybe a pop by, or yeah. what would you find? What would you say is one thing that's success, that is successful for you? For successful for me. So again, I don't, uh, so script wise, I really don't have a script. What I do, and this is one of my things is, is I think Facebook or social media is a window into people's lives. They share everything and anything. They share their, their tragedies, they share their, their successes, they should share their family life, right? So what I always do is I look at people and I look at what's going on in their lives and then I make a phone call specifically about that. So if somebody takes a trip to Disneyland, I make a phone call, I'm like, hey, I just saw you went to Disneyland, that's incredible. How did your family, like you brought your kids, incredible day. And I just talk about them, I talk about their Disneyland trip. So there's not really a script about it, but I look at social media as a window into everybody's lives. Do you ask people for business every time you talk to them or is it just like, just have a conversation? Have a conversation cool. because I have, I call it, uh, I call it commission breath, right? Mm -hmm. Cause if you're breathing on people, right. With commission breath, like nobody likes that. So I would say brush your teeth and then make a phone call, right? So you brush your teeth and then you make the phone call. And then you just talk about them, right? Traditionally and always real estate's going to come up. Real estate's going to come up in every one of your conversations because they're going to say, how are things going for you? I heard you're in real estate or, Hey, how's the real estate market or whatever it is. Then you can lay into your, your real estate scripts. Like that's an easy intro into your real estate scripts, but I never force that issue. Awesome. Yeah. Love that. Any other questions? Let's give him a round of applause. Josh, thank you for sharing that. And if I can reiterate one thing, I get this question from people all the time or the, um, I don't want to call my database or I don't want to make that phone call because I'm scared about using my relationship to be 
as a like an, ex, an excuse or using the relationship as an excuse to get business. But what he just said right there is gold because you don't have to ask, you don't have to talk about real estate every single time. It's still going to be successful. And we have evidence right here about that. So just make the phone call, connect with them. And that's, that's the takeaway, right? Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Um, okay. We are on to the team category and um, Lacey Stevens. Um, she took first place in this with 14 units. So close from 4111. Um, you just had to sell, I guess, uh, you know, one, a quarter of a house more. <laughs> sell that quarter of the house, maybe the garage, include that next time. And, uh, and you would want to know, this is Justin and his team is uh, very commonly on this list and such a great example there. Um, love seeing that. And, and Lacey, she is, she's someone who's just a uh, she's just a worker. She's been doing this for a long time. And to me, she is an example of someone who is at, um, who spends a lot of time at home. She's a, a full-time mom. Uh, her kids are getting a little bit older. So maybe she is saying that she's trying to focus a little bit more into that, but she has, she's been on this list and been a full-time mom several times, a lot of times in the past years. Uh, so someone who is a good example of that to me, and then, of course, uh, the Shy Tower group, uh, Terry, she, if you, yes, we all know that she is on the staff and spends so much time here at the office. And for her to do this business on her team is so admirable. Um, so let's give them a round of applause. <clears throat> um, I, Lacey's not here, but I do want to invite both of them up. And I'm going to see if Justin, if you'll come up here first. Um, would love to hear from you. We've, um, we're getting used to seeing your face. Is that eyes? Yeah. It's nice to see up close in person. You're up not close. lying. Point yeah, two five. I know. I, I wasn't, uh, just trying to make a joke that was close there, but, um, Justin, you're, you guys, you've been up here like you very commonly on the Crimson Club um, each month. Tell us about consistency. Like, tell us about something that you, how do you make sure that you're just continuing to roll all the time? Uh, you want me to call my wife? <laughs> the reason I say that is because sometimes it's, it's a curse sometimes. It's because you work all the time. Um, you know, I thought Josh did a really good job of kind of explaining everything. Um, um i'm just trying to think out loud here guys so one of the things i've so i've been in sales my whole life when i went to school i was doing summer sales and um i did that for five years and i'm going to tell you guys i honestly believe um just in sales in general i think josh Jacino gave you really good advice that um take those principles to heart and as you start to build a following and people know that you care about them, um, I have to be careful in the way that I say this because um, my clients aren't a number to me, right? Um, but very much so, I have a goal in front of me of how many families I want to help each month. And, um, you know, I just, I do a lot of pipeline management. So Josh talks about like his hots and his warms and how often he touches those people and reaches out to them. But truth of the matter is, is, um, you know, we have maybe a week left to write a contract for February. So your February's done pretty much. And um, I'm thinking about March right now, right? So um, I know that sounds crazy to maybe some people, but that's like a conversation that we often have. And when I talk with Sarah, who's on my team, in the agent capacity. So she's the other one in my agent capacity. And we have some admin that help us. Is that's a, uh, a conversation that we're always having is to say, okay, we have a goal to help 84 families this year. If you broke that down, that's seven families a month. And so, you know, right now in February, we just had someone fall out. So we were on track, I think, to do seven. So we had someone fall out and then we had someone get pushed to March. So we'll do five in February. I have a week here to try to make something happen. Market's getting pretty crazy right now. I'm sure you guys have felt that. So 
you know, uh, I'm just really trying to focus on my daily activities. So when you talk about like consistency, I think a lot of people start thinking more of like today, like, okay, hey, um, what can I do? And they might even think like, okay, hey, we're still in, in January. Is there any way I can sneak another one in January? You know, and really like, you gotta be thinking way down the road. What am I doing today to make sure my March is good? And like I say, I have one week for February. So if we get someone in in February here pretty good and, and sneak someone here in the next week, we'll get another February closing. And I look at that one just like, a, hey, kudos. We got them in February. Um, so that's how I kind of just, I just go back to pipeline management and um, really lean into kind of what Josh says, right? Know your people that are, are, are ready, willing, and able. Sometimes, you know, if you just make a list, um, I do this, this might help you guys. I don't know. So I do active clients right here, active clients for me. I'm showing them at least one home a week. If it's a buyer, right. Then I have a client hopper. These are people that are always like, Oh, you know what? I would totally buy a house if I could just like find the right one. Yeah, awesome. I say that because shit, they'll be on that list for freaking eight months. You guys know it. You're not lying to me. And then I do under contract. And I do closed. So this list tends to get long, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, the way that I look at this is I want us to be working with five to seven buyers at one time always with buyers. And so every week you come in, I ask myself, what do we got to do this week to take someone off the active list? And then I also say, who on the client hopper list is in a position where we need to take them from being on a client hopper list to an active category. So when I talk about pipeline management, I'm always just trying to figure out, and, and I try to be careful because it really does come across sometimes like your clients are a number, you're trying to hit seven homes a, a, a month. Here's what you're trying to do. No, those are goals. Believe me, we love the crap out of our clients. We do awesome things with them and they know we care about them, but this just goes back to the business side. And then you know, maybe my last thing is this. I just kind of create a number in my mind that we need to make each month to make it worth it. And, um, you know, I would just say for you guys that maybe in the, in, the, in the beginning phases, you're just trying to say, I just want to close one home. Are you kidding me? Like, I just want to be there. And that's great. Make that your goal. You know, as time goes on, we, you know, business expenses go up, things happen. So I have kind of a number that drives me to say, how can we make sure we hit those numbers? And um, who do we need to love on and make sure they know we care about them so we can do that. So uh, in, the, in light of not talking about my clients like they're numbers, please, they're not numbers. Uh, I just, that is the, I don't know if what they call it, left side, right side brain, whatever brain's analytical. That's the analytical side of your answer, uh, the answer to your question. So I don't know if that made sense, but hopefully it helps. Well, seeing it diagrammed out like an example, this is, this is great. Uh, does anyone have questions on this example that you put out? Yeah. So uh, everybody plug your ears. I don't do buyer brokers until typically I have a contract in place. That's so bad. I just renewed my license and you can't do that. But um, I uh, will tell you, I don't really do buyer brokers. Yeah, so I said everybody I'm plug like, your I ears. Might do that myself too. So in my not eight years, I just finished my eighth year. I'm on my ninth year of real estate. I think I've been burned one time on a buyer broker. So this is where I go back to um, knowing just like my relationship with my clients is pretty deep. So when I have someone on this list, I'm not like trying to sit here and be like, well, in order to be on my client hopper list, you got to actually sign this piece of paper that's a buyer broker that says if you buy a house with anyone else, you're going to have to come back and pay me commissions too. I just leave that there. And I always look at it like, how can I bring value? Most of the time, these people are like, when I said at the beginning, hey, we would totally buy a house. We just got to find the right one. Okay, well, let's talk more about that. Like when you say you'd really buy a house, like am I having the conversation with just the husband and that's his idea? And did I have the conversation with just the wife and that's her idea? Like how can I get them back together so we can plan like an initial consultation? So once I get an initial consultation, I can get them together or the people that are like, man, we would totally buy a rental property this year. Man, we want an Airbnb so bad. I mean, all the things you guys hear, these are the people that hit on this list. 
and then I just go. So like, I mean, we're sitting back there at that table. I've just been working the entire time this has been going. I'm not telling you that's healthy. I don't want you guys to work all the time, but like, I'm just looking at multi-units right now for a client of mine that he's in the client hopper. I know he's got cash. He'll buy it cash. I could find a million dollar property today for him that if it made sense, he would buy it. So now I'm just saying, okay, hey, here's what I'm going to do. I know Mike's ready. Let me just go find the property, right? How can I maybe look at the property in a different light to bring a value add because they're so freaking expensive right now? How can we look at it a different way? You know, is Mike doing a 1031 exchange? No, he's not. So I got to look at this a different way. If he's 1031, then might he might be able to take more of a price that doesn't care so much about cash flow up front or the price is higher up front. So I'd sort of, I just, I hope that answers the question. Just, I just go back to just, Who's on this list? How can I get them to active? We want to take people off this list every week. You know, a kind of a goal I have in my mind is saying like, you know, we want to get two contracts accepted a week. That's just where we're at. That's where I want to be. Does it mean we always do it? Nope, it doesn't. Does it mean we do it sometimes? Yep, it does. But if I'm taking people off this list, I'm going to take off, I want to replace, just replace. So, I mean, it sounds basic, guys. That's just the, that's the, there's so much more that goes into it that I would tell you Josh Jorgensen hit a lot of those things. That is just if you want to get to analytical side. That's how I keep pipeline. Go ahead, Ray. Oh, get out of here. Wait, we, we need here. It sounds like a, a Zoom worthy. I, I, I'm sure you don't want to go super into it, but if you guys were if you would just give these guys the little short thing that you helped me with was the concept of the willing work. Oh, yeah. And, and I would say how that affected me was, you know, a lot of times we get in hairy agents as uh, hairy places as an agent, you know, all happy. It's just the concept of showing up with the right attitude every day seriously helped me a lot. Yeah. So if you guys don't know what that means, you might want to grab him later and ask him, but and I'm sorry if I'm setting you up for a hundred calls today, but yeah, seriously powerful. I'll write your number on the board, Ryan. So, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you guys, you could just, I mean, there was a book associated with that. Maybe you'd share just what that book is. Maybe they can go. Yeah. There. I'll do just a quick little, just what he's talking about, Ryan. Thanks. Just so you guys know, Ryan Pettit, like, He's just a good guy. He's sitting here saying that I changed his life. And just so you know, like when I got in the business, I didn't know Jack spit. We're freaking at sitting at family reunion. And Ryan's just got his arm around me. Just like, <laughs> all right, buddy, we're going to talk about some things here. And I'm like, okay, let's talk. Right. And Ryan's a good guy. So he's always just someone that I look up to. And I don't just say that like Ryan's a good man. He cares a lot about people. What he's talking about just really quick. I'll make this quick. There's a guy named Joe Stump. Joe Stump does real estate coaching. He's out of California. Joe used to have people come into California all the time, but with COVID-19, they do a lot of virtual stuff. Joe is, a, is, is an amazing man. So he's like, I think, um, I think Joe's 60 something now. But anyway, like I used to work out with him. Um, he got into like a, a really big fit process. So he actually qualified for the CrossFit games at an older age. Like, and I would work out with this guy and legitimately he would be lifting more weight than me, doing more burpees than me. I would be like bent over like, Okay, like I think I'm gonna pass out. And he's just sitting there like, just keep squatting, just look at me, just keep talking. And I'm like, no, I really think I'm I'm gonna die. Right. So like it was pretty it was pretty impressive. Um, but there is uh he wrote a book called The Willing Warrior. And if you guys jumped online and you just typed in like seal fit, seal fit's a pretty big, they do a thing called Kokoro. Um, and anyway, it's the Navy SEALs version, it's a civilian version of Navy SEALs Hell Week. And it's a pretty intense thing. And so Joe did it. And, you know, uh, I will tell you a lot of uh, just like mentality behind sales and where I am today. It, I, <laughs> being a real estate agent is multifaceted. I talked to you about like, hey, pipeline management. Josh talks to you about like loving on the clients. Like I could do a whole section on like mental toughness and like, you know, being clear and aligned inside because you can work all day, but if you're not aligned inside and you're not doing it for the right reasons and you're working 24 seven and your family life starts to go to hell because all you're doing is working and you're like, Hey, cool. I got money in the bank, but my family sucks because I don't never there. Like these are real things that you start seeing with producers in real estate. Like I'm telling you, you see this all around, but Joe Stump is all about just getting yourself aligned. Right? So what Ryan's talking about, there's a book called the willing warrior. 
if you guys grabbed it's on Amazon, I think it's pretty cheap. It talks about Joe Stump's experience about uh, what he learned going through this Kokoro process. And, you know, a lot of times, like how we liken it into real estate agents is, you know, it's not always butterflies and rainbows. And um, sometimes it is. And what do we do and how do we show up each day? There's a lot of key principles in there that just help you. Um, you know, he goes into a lot of depth with, with certain things on like how to keep your health and your fitness and all those things, right, too, to keep you mentally stable. But this is like another rabbit hole that we could go in. But I gave that book to Ryan maybe two or three years ago, and he read it. And um, it's just an inspiring book. So, um, it, well, uh, and I would just say is after I read the book, I got you because you were 100% that. Yeah. Right. So nice. no wonder you're having success. I think I told you about then that you would be the top agent here in a few years. So, I mean, you're almost there. I'm a quarter percent behind. There you go. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Sorry when I get this mic. Boy. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. <clears throat>
but that in itself can keep you engaged in your business at a level that will make a huge difference. Um, okay, so what I want to do is go back to, <coughs> excuse me, our, our cappers. And um, if, let's see, who, uh, Rebecca, Marlene, uh, who else is on this list that I didn't see? So you guys come up here. We need to give you a, a cap or, um, or blanket here. Yes. Yeah, you don't want to mess up your hair. Yeah, I know that's actually really great. So let's give them a round of applause. We know we did it already. Um, and we, we don't have a ton of time, but what I do want to do is just recognize the people that were on these lists and just want to say thank you for those that were here. And so if you're, I'm going to scroll through these lists kind of quickly and please look and come up here. We want to be able to see your, see your face. And then what I'll do is I'll ask you your name so you can tell us all who you are. Uh, Cause some people know you, some people don't. And so if you're on these this list. So for example, if you see your name on this list, please come up and I'm going to do this quick because we only have five minutes. But I do want to see, yeah, come up here. We do want to see your guys' face. We should have somewhere around seven to 10 people coming up here. You see your name, please come up. Excellent. Uh, Josh was on here. Justin is on here. Excellent. Rebecca. Um, and I'm just hoping that I'm not missing anyone. We want to make sure that we get a picture of you guys here. Lori, that's awesome. Terry, you're up here. Josh, Ryan, Steve, Lacey, Brian, Jared, Ryan, Steve. And anyone, um, if you're on these teams, you're a part of this as well. So Crimson Club, individual group team. So be heard. Peak Collective, Roxburgh Group. If you're here on, on those teams, uh, Lacey Steven, 4111. I know you said that you've got some people on your team here. Do you want to invite them up here? And, um, and that is, so those are our groups. Um, we want to make sure we get a picture of everyone. Awesome. Make room. Love this. Nice. Yep. Yeah, we're squeezed. There we go. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Let's give all of them a round of applause. Um, honestly, I, I wish we had time to be able to uh, talk with each uh, person. But as we move forward, then we want to see you guys up here more and more and be able to um Zola you you were still sitting there you were up here I didn't see you come up here you snuck out of that picture yeah saw you at the very end I apologize we didn't get you up here so I um just want to say thank you for everyone we want to be able to hear I, I love being able to ask people what's working in their business so that hopefully that gives us some nuggets some things that we can implement and see how how people are doing their business so as moving forward um want to have as much time as we can and, and respect the, the hour that we have. But moving forward in, into next months, um, do you guys like, is this approach helpful when we have awards? Um, any, any feedback on that? We have a thumbs up, we have a couple of thumbs up. Is there, if, if there's no thumbs, if there's a few thumbs down, then please like uh, let me know. Comment in the back. Cool. Yeah, probably because it might be hard to see uh, from your comment, Justin saying that as well. I appreciate that. Yeah. Justin. <laughs> he's laughing he's like that's not actually that funny <laughs> i'm a little offended no oh, justin's got thick skin so 
So just so we can, I'll repeat it for the mic, um, there will be an email posted out um, right at noon. So right, right now, it, it's getting going. Um, and then it's also on our uh, social as well. So you guys can find it there. So we do have that for you guys. We want you to use this for your marketing as well. If you're on this, it's good to um, look good in front of your clientele as well. So again, thank you. Um, oh, I let me see if this is okay. All right, that concludes us. Thank you again for lunch. Go back there, grab some food, and be able to talk with uh, with Scatterscape back there, and just see if you guys have any questions or things that could help your business. Awesome. Thanks, everyone.